Hello everyone, Michael here. Today I'm going to be talking about sound effects, um, how to create and mix your own, and um, how to improve your games by putting in a bit of effort into making some decent sound. Let's go! The magic of sound awaits! So this video is aimed at the small indie game developer that basically has no knowledge of how sound works. Normally you'd sort out your sounds by googling free game sounds and then sort of downloading the first thing that seems roughly appropriate. You slap it in, you go, sorted, sound is done. And you'd probably do the same thing with your music as well. So this is not for someone that is sitting right there. They're working working in a recording studio. They've got their copy of Pro Tools open. They've got the feet up on the mixing desk. There's a band setting up right now for um for their next recording session smoking a cigarette and they're going yeah fellas um i'll mic up the uh the drum set in a couple of minutes so if that's you this is not for you go away watch something else we're going to cover some basic theory as to how sound works but only enough that, so that we know what we're doing when we actually edit things together um we're going to talk about software plugins hardware um the things the things you need and just go into everything quickly and give you like some basic knowledge so you know what you're doing and so that you can stop just downloading crappy sounds and throwing them in. Um, we actually get something good going, okay? Alrighty, so the first thing that we need is a DAW. That's D-A-W. It uh, stands for Digital Audio Workstation. So it's basically a program in which we're going to edit and chop our sounds and move things around. It's like Photoshop for sound. There's a lot of different DAWs out there. There's, there's ones that are commercial, ones that are non-commercial ones that are super expensive, ones that are pretty reasonable. Um, they're all basically the same sort of thing, but they have different interfaces, is really the main thing you're looking at. Basically, all we need is we need a multi-track editing environment, so, you know, editing more than one sound at a time and layering them. Um, that should be pretty much all of them these days. There's not many single-track sort of doors out there anymore. Um, we need VST or AU support. These are the types of plugins. Um, we need them so that we can do different things and download different plugins in a bit. Um, ideally, probably MIDI support wouldn't hurt as well. They should all have that by standard. Um, and we're going to want to mix down to, you know, just a, any sort of format we might want to use to import into our, like, game engine. So, you know, Wave, MP3, OG, whatever it may be that you want. Make sure your door can just mix straight to that. You don't have to convert and all sorts of useless shit. Like I said, there's there's all different ones available. Um, the sort of industry gold standard is called Pro Tools. Uh, it costs a fortune, and it's what they use in you know actual recording studio environments and mastering studios and things like that. Reaper. Um, I haven't used that in years, so I can't attest to how good it is or not. Some people love it. Um, I use one that's called Mixcraft. Now, it's sort of right for me because I like the interface. It doesn't crash on me. I like uh, the plugins it comes with by default, which, yeah, it can support other ones that I download and other ones I purchase, but it comes with a bunch that I quite like. Standard, which is handy, and it's pretty cheap for what it is. So it kind of ticks all the boxes for me. It might not for you. You're going to have to look at, you know, your own options out there. Google, you know, best door uh, in YouTube and you're going to find hundreds of videos. Everyone's telling you to go get Pro Tools. Um, make up your own mind. Get whatever you like. Right, so now that we've got our door sorted, we need some way to actually listen to our sounds. So what we want is a set of decent headphones or speakers that have a good frequency response. Now... Frequency response is basically what sounds the device can reproduce. You normally see it written on the back of the box, and it'll say something like, you know, 20 to 20,000 hertz. We'll get into frequencies later on what it all means, but basically the wider range of that number, the better. Look, you don't have to go out there and spend millions of bucks on expensive headphones or um, studio monitors or anything like that. It's just don't do your editing on like the inbuilt speaker on your laptop for example just get something sort of half decent um you can get some good headphones out there with good frequency response rather cheap i personally use these ones they're samson sr850s they're about 50 bucks or 40 bucks or so they're um cheap monitoring headphones so they're made for doing this sort of thing um they have a good frequency response they're pretty solid for what you pay for them so 
All right, uh, sort of an optional step here is microphones. Um, you may not need microphones because what we're going to do is be largely relying on other people's recordings and mixing and editing those. But if you do need to record something unusual or specific, you might need to record it yourself through your own microphone. So I'll quickly go over just a couple of different things with microphones. This is not our focus at all. So there's two main types of microphones that you might be using. There's dynamic microphones. They look like this. Um, they're very good at recording loud sounds or recording in loud environments. So that's why you see like a, um, a live band using them, for example. The microphone just picks up the lead singer and not up all the other crap around them and doesn't cause a big feedback loop. They're basically, they're pretty cheap. Yeah, they're pretty handy for many different uses. Opposite of them almost is the condenser mic, so things like this. They're more sensitive than dynamics. They're often more expensive, they're more fragile. Um, but they're better at recording sort of in quiet environments. So, you know, the sound of like, um, I don't know, a cotton wool ball touching a piece of felt you can record in a condenser microphone, um, whereas a dynamic wouldn't hear anything at all. But a condenser microphone will also pick up a cat outside meowing or, you know, like a truck driving past two blocks away, that sort of thing. So it depends on your recording environment as to which one's better or not. That's all I'm going to say about microphones because they're really not important for what we're sort of looking at here. Great, so now you've got your new super complex door that you paid way too much for, um, a whole set of microphones that you don't even know what half of them do, and some blinging new headphones and stereo monitors, so what are we actually going to do with them? So what we're going to do is we're going to work together now making some very, uh, very common sort of video game sounds. To make this more visually interesting, we're going to sync our sounds up to this little gameplay clip. It is from a game called Fade to Black that many people don't know about. Um, it's the sequel to Flashback, which is one of my favourite games ever. So here's the clip. And just for a bit of reference, I went and grabbed some free game sounds off the net. So here we are, here's the same gameplay clip with free sounds of Pondland. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can make our own sounds to fit over that clip. So what we're going to do first is we're going to grab a number of samples. So um, basically we're going to build every sound effect from a bunch of other sound effects and mix and layer them and layer and mix them over and over again until we get big, powerful, impactful sounds. So you can record these things yourself, of course, but we're doing things like gunshots. So unless you've got couple of guns in your house and you want to put some holes in the roof we're going to use some other samples that we download off the net so what we're going to do is we're going to head to freesound.org basically the the best sort of site for finding stuff that's licensed under creative commons licenses uh, we're going to specifically look for sounds that are creative Commons zero and that means they're basically public domain you can do whatever you want with them you don't need to give credit or anything like that they've got different licenses on there have a look through the different types for what you need to do to you know, to use the sound, but Creative Commons Zero, you can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some samples that we're gonna need. So for the gunshot sound, I've got things like a cannon, a gunshot, another gunshot. A gunshot. What? And I've got a whip and, you know, a guy hitting a piece of metal with like a, a metal bar, um, other sort of big noises like that. All right, so what we're gonna, there's a couple of main sounds that we're gonna make here. So we've got um, a couple of footstep sounds, so they're real, gonna be real light just background sort of pitter patter sort of thing um we've got the main the player's gun firing we've got two impact sounds one hitting the wall and one hitting the bad guy we've got the bad guy dying and then we've got a um a general background ambient track for the sort of sci-fi type location that it is so they're the different sounds we're going to work on let's start with um gunshots a gunshot all right, so guns and gunshots are a very common sort of sound effect in games because games are all filled with violence and gunfights and things like that. Feel free to argue about violence in video games in the comments. That'll be great. Just go nuts. Don't do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to slap our sounds into the door now. So what I'm going to do is layer the sounds. And I'm doing that because I... Uh, want to have a, a big complex sound so if you just slap one 
sound of a gunshot in there, even if you mix it around, that sort of thing, it's not going to be as good as if you layer a bunch of sounds together. Um, you'll see what I'm getting at as soon as soon as we start. But um, so what we'll do is I'm just going to slap all the sounds in there, and we're going to listen to our new masterpiece. And you'll notice that that sounds absolutely terrible, just having all the sounds just layered over each other, just playing all at once. Um, it's because we're not finished yet. What we're going to do is we're going to crack out the equaliser. Okay, so you've probably seen the equaliser in one form or another before. They all, there's different types, but they all basically do the same thing. An equaliser is basically an advanced volume control. It allows us to control the volume of specific frequencies. Um, we can make certain frequencies louder, which is called boosting, and we can make them quieter, which is called cutting. So, um, what frequencies do you want to boost or cut? You generally get a bit of an ear for it the more you play around with sound, but here's a bit of a sort of handy dandy cheat sheet for you. So, we've got lower than 50 hertz. So this is feel. You can't really, you don't so much hear this, you feel it through like a subwoofer, so it's like a rumble more than anything else. If you're listening to this on a phone right now, you probably can't really hear this. Um, if you've got a subwoofer hooked up to a PC, you've probably got things rumbling off your desk. So 80 to 120 hertz, these are deep sounds. So I uh, think like bass drums, cannons, bass guitars, that sort of thing. If you've got too much going on down here, it can make your sounds muddy. It, um, it's a typical descriptor that you'll hear. So about 120 to 600 hertz. This is like the meat of most sounds. This is kind of, you know, the middle of our sort of hearing range. A lot of sounds exist here. Um, there's, there's not really too much to say apart from that's where most sound sort of happens. When you go from about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 hertz or 2 to 3 kilohertz, this region is a little bit sort of dangerous, I would call it. Sounds heavy on this frequency tend to um, cut through other sounds, which can be helpful. You tend to hear them above um, other sounds that don't have a lot going on this frequency. But if there's too much going on here, it can be really annoying and irritating. Think um, the low health warning from Zelda, that sort of thing. That's like all around this sort of frequency range. Um, about two to 3,000, sometimes a little either side. Um, if sounds sound annoying, try cutting out a little bit of this and it might um, sort of help you out a bit. Or if sounds are sounding too much like they're in the background, try giving a little bit more here. It might help you as well. And so about 5K-ish, um, if you're adding more sort of around this range, adds a little bit sort of more smack to impact sounds and can bring the impact to the sort of front of a mix. If things are too full on and in your face and you want them in the background, cut this bit out, about 5K. If you get rid of that in totally, it makes it sound like, you know, something's coming from next door. And about 8K and above, um, this is where you get sort of shimmer and air and sparkle and that sort of thing. Too much sounds really harsh, not enough makes it sound really dull and dark. Super tip with EQing cut frequencies that you don't want out of sounds before you start boosting the frequencies you do want. So say you've got like a cannon sound, which we do have here. Now the cannon I want all bassy, but I don't want the high frequency parts of that. So I will cut all the high frequency parts out and I will not boost the bass bits, I'll just keep them intact. And then when I've got another sound that I want the opposite, like a whip, I will cut out all the low frequencies but keep the high frequencies intact. So cut before boosting. It's generally you'll get a better sort of end result if you do it that way around. Now with this in mind, I'm going to do a quick pass on the sounds that I've um, got here. Something to keep in mind is you don't want sounds fighting each other um, for certain frequency ranges. So if you've got too many sounds that overlap on the same frequency range, it's going to sound like a mess. So pick sort of which one you want to sort of be in each range and cut the others appropriately and sort of just have like little scoops for each sound. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to cut everything out that I don't want and then I'm going to come back with just the important bits. All right. So I've got a big boomy cannon sound here. I'm, I've cut the high out and I've got the 
low and mid-range there. It's just basically just a big subwoofer rumble now, more than anything else. I've got our gunshot sound. Typically, I've got the sort of mid to low end of that, and only a little bit up high, and then I've got our whip crack, where I've basically just got the high end of this. So, put it all together, we'll have a listen. It sounds like this. So that's pretty good, um, a little bit of a volume adjustment here and there, and we're getting pretty much there. Um, the thing is, we want this sound to be really punchy, I mean, this is a gun, after all, so if you ever heard, a, like, a handgun go off, especially inside, it's really, really loud, like, words cannot explain how loud that is. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at another effect here, it's called a compressor. So a compressor, a lot of people have difficulty understanding how this works and uh, even more difficulty explaining it. So I'm going to try my best. Bear with me if this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When you play with it a bit, you'll understand how it works. Um, but here we go. So a compressor adjusts the dynamic range of a signal. It reduces it, in fact. So a dynamic range is the difference between quiet things and loud things. So a compressor evens that out. So really loud things will be brought down in volume really quiet things will be brought up in volume and you can adjust how much everything changes um, through all the parameters that you have so what it does is it basically it makes a sort of like a bigger sound without actually just bumping the volume up if you want a sound that sounds louder you generally want to compress it you don't just want to crank the volume up it doesn't really work like that it's it's weird you'll get used to it how this sort of works but try to think compressor when you want a loud sort of big boom sound like a gun going off over just cranking up the volume on a volume slider there's a bunch of settings um that i'll quickly go over here so that there's like attack for example um you got threshold and ratio and that sort of thing so attack is basically how quickly the compressor kicks in so when it detects oh i should be compressing something now so moving it up or down it's basically measured in milliseconds how long until that starts so you can just kick it in immediately or it can ramp it up over time threshold is basically how loud the sound has to be before it gets compressed and ratio is how much compression happens to the sound when it is compressed the release is the opposite of attack it's when it stops being compressed how long it takes to return to normal um, you'll get used to how it works by just fiddling with the dials just fiddle with them for a bit and you'll, you'll get it so with this in mind we're going to chuck a bit of compression over the gunshot sound and level everything out so i'm going to play with it here and I'll come back to you with the sort of end result, really. So here we go. All right, so it sounds pretty good. So, But what I want is I want a little bit um, low-end rumble happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of reverb just on the cannon. So let's get in the reverb. So reverb is basically like a, a simulated, so digital effect this, so it's, it's making it up with algorithms and that sort of thing. But it's basically the sound of like the room of the space that you record something in. So, you know, singing in the shower, the sound of your know, voice bouncing off the tiles and then going back to your ear, that's reverb. Um, so it's basically like an echo or a reflection of sound. So we can chuck digital reverb on and sort of make things sound like they're in a cathedral, in a cave. You know, that sort of thing. Um, it's very easy to get your head around. If you play with it, you can just crank dials up and make it sound ridiculous. One thing I'll say with reverb is be really gentle and sparing with it. A lot of people, when they're first getting used to mixing sounds and editing sounds, is they go real heavy-handed with the reverb. They go, that sounds great, and crank it up on everything. I did this too, like way back when I first started doing stuff. It sounds terrible. Don't do it. It's, it might sound good for that one sound, but when you've got like five sounds playing especially in like a game and they've all got their own reverb going on they're all going to mesh together and just sound awful so be real light-handed with the reverb just put a little touch on just a little bit even if you can barely hear it that's that's more than enough okay so what i'm going to do i'm just going to slap a little bit on the very low end here and then we'll come back oh, i think it sounds pretty good that's our gunshot we're just going to lock that in now um we're not going to spend any more time on it that's pretty much done All right, so we're going to do impact sounds next. We're going to get a gunshot done. Uh, we've got two bullet impact sounds, one with the bullet hitting the wall, one with the bullet hitting the body to it. So we want a, a high frequency sort of bing in there as well as a thud, so a low frequency thud. And for the bullet hitting the body, we want that mostly to be 
a big low frequency sort of juicy dunk sort of sound with a little bit of high frequency like squishiness to it like it is hitting you know something soft like so it's going thud with a little bit of uh, basically i'm just going to use the same method i did for the gunshot so i'm going to go through eq layer a bunch of sounds in eq um do any reverb and that sort of thing i need to as well the idea of having a high frequency ping for the ricochet is is gameplay wise giving you an audio sort of cue that being that missed in that like you can hear the sound even if you didn't see where the shot landed you go that didn't hit what i wanted it to and likewise when you hit an enemy it's a big satisfying very rewarding thud and you know that that was a good hit sort of thing so um i'm gonna go ahead and do this i'm just gonna speed it up And there we go, so now we've got our gunshot, we've got our miss, and we've got our hit. Um, now we could just sort of leave it at this, but we've also got some footsteps to do. They're really quick and easy, I'm just literally going to do a footstep sound. I'm not going to even layer these, I'm just going to EQ these. So I'm just going to take out all the bass, I want them really light and airy, sort of, because you're going to be hearing a lot of this footstep sound, so... Um, not too much up the real high end, it's going to just be sort of mid to high. Just a little, real low volume too, so just little taps. And we've also got the uh, a death sound to do as well. I'm going to do that right now, using the exact same sort of thing. It's just a little flavor sound, so you know when the enemy dies. So, there we go. Done the exact same way. Now we're going to do an ambient track. So this is a little bit different, and we're going to get into how this works here as well. Alright, so the way I personally go about ambient tracks is, to me, they're part sound effect, part musical track. So they're largely just kind of noise, but they've got a little bit of a tune to them. Sometimes it's literally a couple of notes, otherwise it's I kind of oscillate things up and down so they have like a kind of pattern or a tune that you can almost hum along to the thing. So here's, just so you know what I'm talking about, here's a couple of ambient tracks I've done in the past for other projects and other games just so you know what I'm, I'm talking about when I say ambient track So for our ambient track we're doing today, I'm going to mix some ambient sounds in. General sort of like computer type noises because it looks like a sci-fi sort of environment. And I'm going to put in a little tiny bit of MIDI work here as well. So some synthesizer that kind of plays a little tune, probably just like four or five notes. So here's, here's my samples in. So basically I'm going to really heavily EQ these things, um, even slow down the actual sounds themselves so I don't even sound like this anymore I'm gonna go quite nuts here I want this really out of the way so all the other sounds are gonna be playing over the top of this so if anything it's kind of real low frequency some low to mids if there's any highs in here I don't really want them around too much and too punchy or anything and obviously it's all gonna play at a pretty low volume underneath everything else so I'm gonna do a bit of EQ here and a little bit of reverb And then here's a bit of synth that I've chucked in as well, just a couple of notes. And playing around a bit more with the EQ and the reverb sort of arrives at about this kind of point. Alright, so let's listen to what we've got so far here. So we've got our gunshot. We've got our, our bullet impacting the wall. Bullet impacting the enemy. We've got our enemy dying. Two footstep sounds. And we've got our ambient track. And here it is together. 
all together with the gameplay. And just for comparison, here is the gameplay, but with the shitty free sounds I downloaded. So there you go, that's a really basic crash course into like the fundamentals of sort of sound editing and mixing. If you're interested in more of this sort of thing, a good thing to look up is music production. Um, all the sort of things that are involved in like recording and a music track are what you use to, you know, do the same things with just sound effects as well. It's just basically less complicated. You don't have to sync up drum beats and things like that. Um, Hopefully this will help you out, even just a basic idea of what you're doing with sound is a lot better than just grabbing stuff off the internet and throwing it straight in without any editing done to it whatsoever. It's at least if you, you grab that sound and do a little bit of EQ to it and knowing where it's going to place in with your other sounds and EQing it for that sort of purpose, that's going to go a long way. It's just, yeah, stop just downloading sounds and throwing them in. Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if it doesn't, then too bad. Thanks for watching. Um, big thank you to our patrons for supporting this video and all our videos. Thank you very much again. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.